Different day, same take. Um, who is going to be the person that steps up and wins it for you in a critical game? You know, like... I'm not saying this about Tommy Tanks. He had two home runs today. This is not on him. But you get a live drive, you get a line drive single in the ninth, and Vandy knows that he's going to be swinging first pitch. They go off speed. He misses it barely, but he misses it. Um, Steven Milam, okay, runners on first and third, first pitch, pitching change, and you have a rollover. Can't happen. It just, guys, it can't happen. I, I I was really expecting Jay to lay down a bunt there. It's why I, I tweeted out. Um, I, I'm interested to see what Jay does with Milam here, who has been struggling. To be real with you, I didn't know if he wouldn't go pitch hitter. But he didn't. He stayed with Milam, the young freshman. He rolls over one, six, four, three, double play. And again, coming off of two Tommy White home runs. You go to the bottom of the fifth. Jones gets an RBI single, hits into the four hole in the shift. Travinsky gets a leadoff or gets an infield single. And you have bases loaded, two outs in the bottom of the fifth. And you have a very critical moment where you could have busted the game wide open. Pearson strikes out with the bases loaded. By the way, had a 2-0 and count in that one as well. And then that's when Vandy started pouring it on a little bit. Uh, Espinal doubles in the left center field. Hurd comes in. He gives up a walk. Uh, but, it, but the runner gets a third on a pass ball. And then you have an RBI single by Davis. So they score a run in the sixth. They come back in the seventh. They get a single, a bunt, which, guys, they played small ball on you to beat you. So let me just say this too. If you're going to criticize Milam or you shouldn't bunt Milam in that situation, well, Vandy bunted twice tonight in an inning that produced a run. So to anybody, and I mean anybody. Now, last night we talked about Fry, but that dude's 6'5", 250 pounds. He has no business hitting a, 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 bunting the ball. I know you're trying to catch them off guard there, or he missed a sign. I don't know. But they literally used small ball tonight to get back into the game and beat you. And then later in the game, they took walks. They were aggressive on the base paths. Laura comes up, gives up a single. That would generate an RBI. Oh, by the way, the inning before that, Nate Ackenhausen gives up a bomb into right field by the way, on an 0-2 count, hits Polk to get him to first. Those are the kinds of things that beat you. Not being able to live up to the moment when you have the lead. It happened two Saturdays ago against Florida when you could have clinched. It happened to you again tonight. I... You know, another uh, interesting decision. Jay is playing matchups, and he goes to a lefty in Lore. I un I don't fault Jay for going to Lore because of playing the matchup. The problem with going to Lore, he's given up a run in every almost every inning he's been in. Literally, I'm not joking. Even if it's unearned on him, he's not been good enough. So. You know, it, it takes away Tommy Tanks hitting two home runs tonight in a lot of ways. I mean, we can go through it. Tommy Tanks hits a home run in the bottom of the third, which ties it because in the top of the third, Austin, the leadoff first baseman, hit a two RBI or hit a two run home run uh, as well. So White would come up and get a two run home run of his own after Milam. Got a single on that little bunt, I guess you would call it. Larson hits a home run. That kid had a hell of a night. Ashton Larson's got to stay in the lineup, guys. You, you've gotten to a point where he's got to be in the lineup. I know that you want to get Kling in there. Doesn't matter. Ashton Larson homered last weekend. He homered this weekend. Y you got to keep him in the lineup and get him reps and get him going. Just 
I mean, Brady Neal tonight, too, I, I thought had a really bad game behind the plate, uh, an exceptionally bad game behind the plate. I, I mean, in retrospect, Neal pretty much accompanied two runs on his own that are two runs that you lose by here tonight. So it is what it is, man. I will say this, and I will. I, I want – just caution everybody. You're not out of the series. You're not out of it. How do you respond tomorrow in a critical game, critical situation? Guys, I'm telling you, tomorrow is as must win as it comes. It is it, 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 it is as... You got to win, man. You got to win tomorrow. There's no doubt about it. You got to win. You got to find a way to win tomorrow. I, I I really don't, you know, because you go to Tennessee and I know things slight uh, or, or get a little bit easier. Guys, Auburn, I think, didn't Auburn beat Tennessee tonight? Missouri walked off Florida. I, I mean, if you don't think you could lose a game, and lose multiple games because you're not playing at your best. The moment is too big for you. Guys, there's no other way to put it. Are there situations of talent that maybe isn't there? Maybe you missed on some guys? Maybe so. Maybe guys aren't performing to the ability that they need to. Completely with you. I understand that. I, I That's going to be baseball to some extent. Sometimes you're going to have streaky stuff all around, different storylines. There's always different things that you can talk in and talk about in baseball. But the bottom line is, every single weekend, you're just not living up to the moment. And I think that that goes with leadership. I think that it goes with, you, did you hear the, the uh, Tom's story tonight about how guys were interacting? Because Tom uh, uh, or, or Tim, Tom, whatever his name is, uh, was talking about how, you know, Jay and uh, said something about how the camaraderie got better when he took the phones away. I, I mean, you're and, and I tweeted this. You know, I, I'll just leave it at this. I tweeted this um, during the game, okay, and about the, I guess it was the eighth inning, is I said, you are really about to find out about your team. Can you come back? and win and there's a reason that i said that because it's not it's something that you faced every single weekend it's something that you faced multiple times and you have not gotten over that hump when do you get over that hump i know that context is key here i'm not hitting the panic button or wasn't hitting the any kind of panic button but it's just another day, another week, another situation where you can clinch. Now, you can come out tomorrow. You can absolutely just destroy the baseball or have a good pitching performance by multiple guys and win the game. Now, still think you can win this series. Really do believe that and that you can. Your back's up against the wall now. Those three little letters on your chest or, or your hat. The three little letters on your chest, the name, uh, even the, the <laughs> I mean, the name on the front of the jersey has got to be more than the back. And it's time to live up to it. Or it's going to continue. And you're not going to make it to a postseason. Okay. Or, or you're going to be on the brink of, or you're going to be really scrapping to get into one. I don't know if you get 13 and 17 in the league. I don't know if you can get to 14 and 16 in the league. I mean, guys, you haven't won a you haven't won a weekend yet, right? I mean, so talk about a a big time situation tomorrow. Big. Big, big time situation tomorrow. No other way to categorize it. All right. Every post game show is brought to you by our good friends over at betonline.ag. Guys, 
Iowa and UConn, 70 to 66 right now. UConn trying to come back on Caitlin Clark. You can bet on it live. Bet on March Madness. Men, women's started today. Men's starts tomorrow. So you can get over to betonline.ag. Use that promo code Believe50. That's Believe50, B L E A B 50 to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. And our good friends over at the Athletic Collection. Guys, I told you last night, all this stuff, all the LSU content that they're producing, you want stickers, shirts, posters. Man, they got it all. Sign stuff, autograph stuff. Your one-stop shop for LSU uh, stuff is the Athletic Collection. Use that promo code AYS to get 20% off on your order. All right, let's get to a couple of your comments here. Uh... A. McNabb, 23, with a $4.99 Super Chat. He says, Blake, the pitching staff is just like the football, is just like football defensively. We couldn't get off the field on third down. Now you can't get the third out. I do think that that makes a lot of sense. And, to, and thank you, A. McNabb, 23. And again, you're just not living up to that moment. You can't, and he's right. You can't get that third out. And it's not just even tonight, A. McNabb. I think that there's other things, too, that we need to talk about. Critical situations at the plate, and you have a freshman on the first pitch, man. The first pitch, rolling over to shorten a 6-4-3 double play. I don't necessarily blame Milam. Guys, he's a freshman. I, I just It's hard for me to do that to him, especially how good defensively that he's played. But the bottom of the fifth with bases loaded, I, 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 you got you got to come up with some of these big hits, man. When you when you're getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to close them out or to get to a place where you can start really separating yourself, that is what gets you one of these. If you can't see the sticker, it's from our good friends at the Athletic Collection. It's a national uh, uh, championship banner. It's got all the years on the bottom. Uh, Great teams, good teams are able to, when there are critical situations in baseball, that you're able to get that one big hit. Bottom of the fifth, Pearson, he's got to come up with it. Momentum would have taken you through the entire night, likely, if you get up with a hit there. Then Milam, okay, so Pearson rolls over one. So let me back up. It's the top of the eighth. And let me paint this picture in in this situation, okay? You have a hit-by-pitch that Ackenhausen has on an 0-2 count. He gets a fly out to Milam. So you have two outs. Uh, Just to A. McNabb's situation and what he just said in the Super Chat, Okay, you get the fly out. You got two outs. You get out here from Davis. Guys, you're you're talking about you're three outs away from beating Vandy at home. But Ackenhausen gives up the bomb to right field. I just, it it's those and barely two. You come up in the bottom of the eighth. Braswell walks. Now, I don't think that Braswell should have walked there. I think he should have been rung out on strikes, but he got walked. Larson, okay, gets the uh, swinging bunt. Nine pitch at bat from Ashton Larson, who had a home run earlier and then another base hit back up the middle that couldn't score Braswell. I saw people like, Braswell's got to score. Nah, he's got to get back to the bag there. Kyle Peterson talked about that. That's just basic baseball 101, okay? So you have a timeout in the pit. You have a timeout there, and Jay is talking to Milam. And the first pitch he sees, I mean, maybe – I know Jay doesn't want to take away, like, hey, man, if they give you a night, a good pitch, a good fastball, swing on it, but you just can't roll over on it. Like, it's the last thing that you can do. Another situation. I, I, I tweeted this as well. I really thought Jay was going to bunt Milam or he was going to do something 
When you got runners on first and third, maybe do a delay steal at first, getting a run down there, and then try to get Braswell home from third to generate a run. Because, guys, you're only down one in that situation. If Braswell, for whatever reason, gets out, I got to be honest with you, right now I could be able to live with it because, look, you can't really take out Milam. You don't want to take out Milam because of defensively, and you're trying to make a play, even playing small ball. Guys, that, listen, this is exactly what Tim Corbin does when he's down. If you've watched SEC baseball for a long time, look what he does. He's not He's not going to overreact. His blood pressure is not going to get over, or his pulse is not going to get over 85 at max because he is going to get one run in any, one run in any. That is his game plan. If it takes a bunt for him to get there, then he's going to do it. Another thing, when Vandy gets somebody on, their entire team goes on attack. They did it last night, too, when you're up nine to nothing and they storm all the way back and get into the game with you. But see, with the difference about last night to tonight is last night you got the big hit when you needed it. Tonight, you could not. Tonight, you just could not. And that is the part where I keep saying, look, you have the talent to win that game one in a critical situation. But when it comes down to nut-cutting time, are you able to take that next step and take it over the mark? That is the frustrating part for me. Kalen Clark's at the line. I was up 71 to 69 right now. If she sinks this next free throw, they'll be up by three with 3.5 seconds left to go. I really am hoping that Iowa gets the raw end of this deal. Uh, miss it, rebound. Iowa gets it. That's going to be game. That's going to be game for Iowa. Uh, John Sibley Butler with a $20 Super J says, Thanks, Blake. Do you think Coach Johnson has, quote-unquote, lost this team? I do not. Uh, or is in danger of losing this team? I don't think that he's – and thank you, John Sibley Butler, for the Super Chat. I don't think he's lost the team. And no, I do not believe uh, that he is in danger of it. Um, I have heard you, some of you, very few, a minority of you. Stay with me here, John Sibley Butler. Not you. Just I, I, I think this needs to be said. Jay has been compared to Orgeron. That can't. Jay, look at how much Jay cares, and is trying everything he can. Ed didn't. He got with big titty blondes, and it didn't matter to him no more. Um. I, I don't know what else Jay can do. Uh, at this exact moment, I just don't think there is anything he can do. The only thing that, you know, it, I I don't know. Because it, it's not like that you don't or you're not competing and you're not there. Guys, you're competing in every game. I, I mean, it, it's kind of honestly, to some extent, I don't want to say bad luck, all right, but – there comes a point I was advancing. They're going to the, the national championship game with Caitlin Clark. Good for them. I'm about to get roasted on Twitter. I might need to go delete something. <laughs> I talk way too much shit. You know, those Iowa, those racist Iowa fans, man. They don't. Uh, they're not. They're going to let you have it. They're certainly going to let you have it. So let me go delete something. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right. Um. Look, um, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, 
I, I'm somewhat at a, at a loss for words in, in, in some of this. Here's my thing, man. You're you're competing Mississippi State. You're in both of those – and two of the games that you – well, really one of the games that, that first game one you were in. Sunday you just got your doors blown off. Uh, Sunday against Florida you got your doors blown off, but you could have beaten them on Saturday to win the series. Guys, you're in every game against Arkansas. You battled your way and you you battled really tough. Tonight, I mean, you're up again. You're unable to hold on. Vandy just keeps answering you. Every time that you do something good, they an experienced team continues to answer you. They got a couple of freshmen in there too. But they're freshmen tonight. You want to know the difference? Here's the difference. Milam, a freshman, hits into a 6-4-3 double play. Kozell, if I'm not mistaken, is a freshman or a sophomore. I can check that very quickly. Hold on. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a young guy now. A very young guy. Kozell is a... Uh, let me go look at this because I know Koki Riley has it. Um, come on. Koki tweets way too much during the game, man. Uh, Koki. Yeah, freshman. So Milam hits into a 6 4 3 double play in the eighth. And then their freshman, Kozell, gets the single in the right field with the RBI in the ninth that pushes the lead. To at least to me, what felt like maybe a little out of hand, uh, uh, like you weren't going to get to. So they have young guys in their lineup. They're cu- they're coming up to the plate and they're getting the big hit. You got your guys or not? I mean, and, and those those are some of the things that when the opponent is executing in the same situations that you are, a freshman coming up, runners on base runners on first and third, and they get the hit and you do not, that accumulates when they're able to do it and you can't. That's how it does. And look, you know what I did today? This Let me tell you what I did. I changed up everything because I thought that, you know, I'm a very superstitious human being. I wash this shirt. I wash the same pants. I wash the same socks. Okay, now I do I do have my lemon pepper steppers on. But I was trying to be superstitious and like, hey, man, I'll wear this shit every game that they play on a weekend if it wins it for them. I switch from pens to pencils on the on the board. Thought that they, you know. Goes to show me, man, superstitions are, are, are stupid. Very stupid. Yes, I, I, yes, we are going to get to um, we are going to get to the Trey Holly news. We will get to the Trey Holly news. We'll be out there tomorrow for practice as well. All right, if you want your comment read for one hundred percent certainty, send in a super chat, and we will get to it. Corey Johnson says, "I think it's going to be Holton versus Anderson, maybe tomorrow, maybe, maybe." I tell you what, though, Anderson has not looked particularly great in the SEC. And I don't know who he goes with on Sunday. Like, I I, I legitimately don't. Uh, I don't, I, I, you know, freshman in that, in that situation when you – guys, th- this team knows – these players know that they got to win tomorrow. They know. I, they're, I, and look, I'm not – your season's not over if you don't. I mean, theoretically, it's not. You got a, You still got a long way to go. God forbid you go to Knoxville next week and win, and your season starts, you know, really starting to form on itself. It's just going to take – I really feel – this. How I really, really, really feel that it's going to take one big hit in a certain situation – and to win you a series, and then you're going to really get going. It's going to take one big hit. And I will tell you, <laughs> you know, like it, it – you know, I, I think of moments like last year with Gavin Duga uh, against South Carolina. Gavin Duga 
versus Texas. You just you can't repl- it, it, it's those things like Gavin Duga hitting a bomb against South Carolina. You were about to go two and lose and be, be down two to zero to South Carolina last year, and then Doogie hits the bomb. You win it. You split. You don't play on Sunday. Doogie getting the big hit in the top of the ninth against Texas. Those are just the things that got to happen from a guy. Look, Duga Dugas is not going to play long in the minors. If he's even playing right now, I don't know. And it, it, you know, it's just, I mean, he's just not, I mean, I hope he does. I hope he proves me wrong. He's, I mean, I hope he does. And I hope he plays in the league for a long time. If, if that's his, his course of action, but you can't replace a lot of that stuff. You can't replace the bats that Beloso gave you. And those are the situations. It's not the super it, Dylan Cruz, Tommy tanks. Those guys are going to be those, their guys. I mean, Tommy had two bombs tonight. It's just everything around him's got to get better. Everything around him's got to get better. I, and, and so, yeah. Joseph Lee says, we haven't lost four series in a row in baseball since the 60s or 70s. Can somebody bean count that? Can, um, can somebody bean count that? Joe Arnone, which got to be real with you, I'm, I'm related to Arnone. So, Joe, I uh, appreciate the family, the Italianas, the Sicilians are in the building. So I'm just going to tell you, to all of you in here that act up and talk shit, all right, the Italianas are here. And, and look, I will tell you, the Rafino family, the the Rafino Italian side, they're more calm, tall, 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 more calm. But the Arnonis, if you want to know what an Arnoni is, um, it's like Joe Pesci from uh, Goodfellas. If you ever want to know what a, a, an Arnoni looks like, just look at Joe Pesci from. <laughs> I'm gonna get killed for that, but. Joe Pesci from Goodfellas. They the crazy ones, man. Look, I've seen two Arnonis in a bar one time fighting their way out of it. All five, nine of them. Back to back, laying dudes, I swear to God, laying dudes out. Now, I got more of the Rafino blood. My dad got more of the Arnoni blood. That's why his crazy ass is crazy. That's why they call him Crazy Blue Lou. But I'm just telling you, the Arnonis, man, Shit. Don't mess with the Sicilians. They will stab you quick. Stab you so fast. But... Dear Lord. Don't mess with them. All right. Let's get to some more of your comments. Uh, Brandon Ray says, at some point, this team has to find a leader. Coaches can only say and do so much. I agree with that. Pete says, we won't win many series this season. I somewhat agree with you if they don't get it going, but you got a long way to go. Stephen Young says, if we don't win tomorrow, we are getting swept by Tennessee. I don't know. I I, I don't know that yet. I, I'm not hitting the panic button yet. Maybe I should. Maybe I should be. Thumbs up if you're hitting the panic button in the chat. Send it in the chat right now. Are you hitting the panic button? Give us a thumbs up. If you're not, give us a thumbs down. I I will go a thumbs down. I am not hitting the panic button yet. I think you can win tomorrow and take the series. I think you can win tomorrow and take the series. But you got it. You got your. You got to take it. Um, Corey Johnson says, "I agree, Blake. It's anyone's guess. Holton is a dude, though. He is a dude, and they're going with their one and two guys Friday, Saturday, and I just don't like a freshman in that situation." And Cade has not had an appearance in the SEC that's gone completely smooth for him. Um, Maybe being at home will do it. Guys, again, I I know that I sound crazy. I know that some of you think I'm crazy. Um, I I just think tomorrow is as much win as you can get. Uh, L.A. Farm Girl says, do I amuse you? (laughs) quote unquote the Joe Pesci reference um funny funny how I'm telling you that's how the Norris are I swear to God man 
see, some of y'all believe, you know, some of them uh, 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 gangster movies are fake. No. Now, I don't think Rocky Balboa could beat up Apollo Creed in real life. But what I will say is, don't, some of them, some, some of them, it's the more of the Sicilians. Sicilians, you've got to be careful for. Like Sammy the Bull Gravi, uh, Gra- Graviano, whatever his last name is. But Sammy the Bull. I mean, so yeah. See a lot of thumbs up. See a lot of thumbs down. Uh, Tammy, Noah, uh, Dale all have thumbs down. So does Jordan. Jason has a thumbs up. Uh, Steven and Dustin have thumbs ups. Um, uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna say I'm not panicking yet. Let's see what tomorrow. Ask me tomorrow and we'll see. Ask me tomorrow and we'll see. Until then, uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Fred says, Gidry cost us a chance last week versus Arkansas. Jay is depending on Ackenhausen and Gidry too much from last year. Um, he- Here's my thing. Um, I don't know. I, here's what I've I've started to do. What I've started to do is is when a comment like that is made, who would you put in for Ackenhausen? Who would you put in? Maybe you can leave in Helmers a little bit longer, give him a little bit longer leash. I mean, if you're going to give it up anyway, my, see, I, I, this would be the only argument that I would accept at the current moment. Will Helmers has an ERA below one. If Ackenhausen is going to give it up anyway, and he's going to give up the bon, bomb anyway, and we've seen him do that, and we've seen him not be consistently good, I would extend Hel- Helmers. I, I I I mean, there, you got to find somebody. You got to find somebody, and what happens is too. See, we look a lot of, about college baseball, and we should about offense, but how you manage a pitching staff, I, I mean, is just it's amazing. Um, may, you owe a, you Fidel's been getting hit around though, man. I mean, Fidel's got over a six or seven ERA, if I'm not mistaken, or close to maybe a five ERA. I mean, he gave up, if I'm not mistaken, didn't he give up a bomb last weekend too? Um, so, yeah. Joseph says, not Rafino acting like he, he comes from a bunch of wise guys. Joe, if you don't realize that that's a joke, I, I, I really don't know what to tell you, bud. It's a joke. I am serious about the Arnonis, though. They are like that, but they're not wise guys. Um, let's see here. Doug knows with a one ninety nine dollars super chat says happy wedding day tomorrow to Dale Laborde. Um, happy wedding day, man. Actually, can I tell you something, Doug? Dale gets married on the same day that I did. That is correct. On April the sixth. My wife got me a new um, watch. A I I, I kind of like these Fitbits, man. To be real with you, really nice. It's not a paid promotion. I like these Fitbits. Um, she got some new AirPods. Um, I'll be out of practice tomorrow. She has a wedding, so we actually have to work. Um, but we're gonna go do something probably soon. Um, hopefully, we'll do something nice for one another. But you're getting married on the best day. Uh, on my wedding day, man, it rained when we when the groomsmen or the grooms and, and myself got to the place we're getting married at. It rained for like three seconds and everything got wet. So before everybody started showing up, like 40 minutes before people started showing up, you had people because our wedding was outside. The the rece- uh, the uh, ceremony was outside. We had to wipe down everything, take pictures, go inside, whatever. Here's a funny story. Um, so all my groomsmen come down with the bridesmaids. Okay. 
Uh, my brother was my best man. My cousins were in it. Uh, a, a, a guy that is in football, uh, a couple guys actually that were in football, and a guy that I work with and was is a really good friend of mine and my good buddy Todd, who actually painted this picture uh, behind me here. Um, all the grooms and 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 and, and uh, Brad, bridesmaids come down the aisle, and the the song starts getting played. We stood there for five minutes. Swear on my life, I thought I got left. But the wedding reception receptionist, the person who was running the wedding never told my wife to get out of the vehicle that she showed up in, which she showed up in like a really nice vehicle or something. Didn't, no one went to get her. And then they finally, after like five minutes, after there was a kind of a panic, everybody's sitting out there, like 200, 250 people sitting out there and no bride. And her and her dad were just sitting there talking, laughing their asses off. God rest his soul. Great man, Mike Tragel. And uh, finally, I looked at her, her, her twin. Uh, my wife is a twin, not identical, fraternal. And I looked at her and said, if you don't go get your sister, I'm going to, I'm going to make an ass out of this whole thing. So finally, somebody went to go get her, and we laughed our asses off. I boo-hooed. Boy, did I boo-hoo. I, and I boo-hooed like, you know, like lip quiver. Horrible. And my heart was, uh, when she came out, I, the most relief I'd ever felt in my entire life. Because, man, I've got like, a, you know, 75 people that are, I consider, I guess, friends that are there. All of them sitting there, I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck? I was, I have never in my life been that scared. Uh, Joseph says, why does Rafino try to beef with his viewers? I'm out. What a douche. Goodbye. Yeah, you've been trolling your ass off, you stupid motherfucker. I hate when people, they come in here with these fake ass profiles and all they do is sit in here and troll. Goodbye. Uh, Fred says, how many appearances does Ack have now versus how many bombs he has given up? I'm not sure about that. Somebody, you have to have like Paul Sub uh, in the chat. I do not know. He says, at this point, see what Aiden, Primo, Johnson, et cetera, can do. Micah has been shoving this year. Do something different. Probably right. Probably right. Uh, Newt did throw this weekend or this week to batters. I mean, yeah. Jordan says that's what I'm saying. Let him pitch midweek and maybe his confidence will start to come back up. Who is that? Heard? Heard again, man. Just, just not, just not there. Uh, Stephen Young says, why are pitchers not working like Little, Woods, Anderson, Cam, et cetera? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I, I don't know. Tyler Cooley says, even though he's been out for a while, is Newt going to be able to contribute? I don't know that either. Like I just said, Jay said he threw this week. But, guys, he – okay, here's a good preface time before we get to this Trey Holly thing. Um What are we expecting Newt to do? I mean, with all due respect to him, are we expecting him to come in here and be our Lord and Savior? That is unrealistic. Unrealistic. Now, if he is, that's great, and you need it. Temper expectations. Kid, kid's a great athlete. Um, I, I just, I, you, I, I don't think him coming back. You know, 
I don't even think he'll – I don't know if he'll see SEC play. Give him a pitch in the midweek and then see what he does. Uh, a. McNabb says, what the hell happened to Cade Woods? I don't know. I, thank you for the super chat, McNabb. I, I really don't know. We saw him early, early in the year, and after that, he was out. He was out. I Thank you for the super chat. I, I don't know. I, guys, I don't know. Because these questions aren't asked, and when they're remotely asked, Jade is just like, yeah, well, he's working, and that's why they don't get asked. That's why they don't get asked. Uh, Jay said, it's better in Omaha if you have six pitchers or some shit. The problem is, is he doesn't have uh, the right six at this moment. Shit, he don't have two. I mean, out of the pen, he ain't got two. He's got Herring, and that's about – I mean, Herring's been the only one that's been consistent. He's the only one that still has got that dog in him. Only one. Only one right now. Uh, Jeff says that this team has no chest. He has the Jesus uh, avatar. Look at you go, man. Adam says him coming back doesn't fix the offensive problems. It doesn't. It's a good point, Adam. It, it, it really, it really, really doesn't. Um, it, it doesn't fix when you need, and it's just guys getting the big hit in timely moments that you're just not getting, that you got every time damn near last year. You're just you're not you're not getting them. You're not getting them. Chris says that this team has no marbles. Ooh, we going with the major league two reference. Fred says I like Pearson, I really do, but he looks like he eats his boogers with that mustache. <laughs> oh, come on, man, come on. The t- the, I mean, he almost had two bombs tonight. It's just that, like, even – like, I, I don't even know if I would – I probably wouldn't have even said anything. Like, he hits two balls to the warning track tonight, right? Or he hits one to the warning track, one that could have possibly gone out but goes foul. Uh, I, I mean, if that would have happened and he hits the ball to the warning track and be like, you know what, man? I mean, like, he damn near got all of it. I mean, what do you do there? But when you go down, when you go down in a strikeout, and you and you, you, you like the count starts two and zero, oh, and you can't put a good enough swing together. I mean, and it's not, and it's hard to ask that, right? Like, but that's what you got to do to win games, man. Like, I, I mean, baseball is a is a is a funny sport, right? Like, well, Blake, you're not. I mean, if you if you get a hit one uh, three out of every ten times, you're a Hall of Famer. Well, okay. You also got to have a clutch factor and a clutch gene in you. And then poor Malazzo. I mean, he hadn't seen a, a, a an at-bat worth a fuck uh, in three weeks. <laughs> and you're expecting him to come in and just, you know, be a dude. Uh, Brandon Reese says, if we get an early lead, hopefully we can actually seal the deal. Man, I mean, we've been getting early leads all year, and we couldn't seal shit. We ain't sealing shit. Unfortunately. Uh, McNabb says, we can't seem to develop a pitching staff. It's always just one one or two guys. I, I mean, it's, it's the reverse Maneri in a lot of ways. And this goes to a point, man. Like, look, I'm not this. I'm not saying this is going to happen with Jay, but sometimes you put shit in perspective too. Like, man, maybe that shit ain't always easy. You know, I mean, Paul. I mean, Paul won a lot of fucking games. And look, Jay's going to write this wrong, even if it's got to be a shitty year. Jay's not in a situation, in my opinion, nor is he the type of coach that is going to sit on his hands and sit, you know, a completely different situation than the others. And Jay will go be able to go get money. I, LSU is a place that will go out there and spend money. But it, it, look, here's one thing that feels like it's going to be for sure. They're going to have to hit the portal. And when big time guys get in there, you're going to have to go get them. Spend what you got to spend. And, and look, 
<laughs> you know, how desperate are you? What I mean, I don't think Connor Griffin gets here, but with NIL, can you offer him something and, and make a and make a damn big pitch? Say you give him a million. I mean, look, I'm just because you you need dudes, man. I mean, you need dudes. And you're dudeless at some at, at points and times. Dudeless. <laughs> Fred says, I got a better chance of sealing a deal with my wife tonight than this team does sealing a deal with a lead. That's true. It's true. <laughs> Brandon says, I did not notice that in the bottom of the innings, the pitching coach was in the bullpen. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. They're doing everything they can. And look, I another thing that I'll address before, and this will be the last thing, and then we'll get to this Trey Holly stuff. Um, I'm not out on Nate Yeski. I, I'm just not. Guys, he's been the pitching coach when you've won multiple national titles. And here's what I think is di is difficult. What's difficult is some of these guys have had three, two, three different guys teaching them, and it's not how you learn and develop. I mean, guys, you've had three different pitching coaches in three different years. And it, I think it's a massive problem with pitching when you have the portal. It's But, I mean, he's going to have to find different ways. And he's going to have to tell Jay, listen, if we go to Ackenhouse and if we go to Gidry, I, I mean, we're mailing it in. We got it. We're at some. And here's the thing. At some point, if it gets bad enough, when you get in the season, you're just going to have to throw shit at a wall. I, if it guys, if it, it, I mean, in retrospect, if, if you're 10 and 20 it, 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 or you're 12 and 18, I, I mean, does it really matter if you're trying to go out there and win and find do, find guys that can win games for you? I don't really think that it does. I don't really think that it does. <clears throat> All right. Let me get to this very quickly. Um, they did go on A&M's roster, did, our pitching staff got better. They also went heavy into the portal too. And that's another thing. Nate wasn't here went to go get the guys that he would want. Let me take a quick break. Come back. We'll talk about Trey Holly. We'll be out to practice tomorrow. Stay with us. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. No, not mud bugs. Unwanted bugs like these. The ones you don't want crawling in your home or business. Trust the shield from J&J &J Exterminating. We've been protecting Louisiana homes for over 50 years, earning the trust of our clients because we deliver what we promise. Protect your home from pests. Get the shield from J&J &J Exterminating. J&J Exterminating. Yeah. Guys, you might know my good friend Carol Falls and all the great service that he provides over at State Farm. He is your good neighbor after all. But did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates as well? Along with the great neighbor service, State Farm agent Carol Falls has surprisingly great rates for everyone inside the state of Louisiana. So call him today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300. For all of those surprisingly great rates on auto, home, and life insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to the State Farm underwriting requirements. By the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Whether you've been injured in an accident, you're preparing for a future with your estate planning, you're getting ready to close in on a real estate deal, or you're about to welcome a new addition through adoption into your family, or you're facing criminal charges, you need very experienced attorneys, and that is what the Drake Williams Law Firm will be able to do for you in navigating the legal system. The door to their cozy office in historic downtown Ponchatoula has been open since 1981. They have helped thousands and thousands of Louisiana families and individuals win cases, close on real estate deals, and regain that peace of mind. Their lawyers over at the Drake Williams Law Firm, Ernie Drake III, Ryan J. Williams, and Summer Vignair are very determined, compassionate, and dedicated to their craft. It's a Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Give them a call today at 985-386-7600. Tell them your good friend Blake Rafino at AYS sent you on by.
All right. So, Jocks do say of WAFB, a little retraction, but it we'll talk about it. It doesn't matter. Um, Trey Holly has been cleared of any wrongdoing, and the grand jury is not going to pursue charges on the attempted second-degree murder. Um, in reference to that, he does still face the misuse of a firearm. I think that's going to get pled down to a misdemeanor and other charges or another charge. Um, guys, both of those things can be reduced down to misdemeanors. And people say, well, he's not out of the woods yet. I do kind of think he's out of the woods. Con- considering today with the news of Trey Holly being cleared and the grand jury not going to pursue him on a te- second uh, uh, attempted second-degree murder is massive for him. Still does not change my view that you need to go get another running back. I still think that you need one. You could use one. Go get one. But it's a massive thing today for Trey Holly. It goes to the ultimate thing that we should talk about and should do in this country is innocence until proven guilty. Trey, from the very beginning, when this story comes out, or came out, he was very uh, uh, blunt and, and, cre- and just precise on things that he said. He said that I did not do that. I did not do that. I did not do that. And on the attempted second degree murder, it would seem as if that maybe some stories were fabricated. If you remember when we talked, and you can go look at the clip video that we posted on YouTube when we talked about this incident, um, my thought process was in the world that I came from before starting all of this, there were holes in the investigation that the police in Union Parish were putting out that made no sense. Let me start with number one. They said that they had forensics on the bullets. Unless you're Batman or Dark Knight where you can get, or, or not forensics, ballistics, excuse me, if you can go and get ballistics, same weekend of, that's not how that shit works. And I guarantee you, it's not how it works in a very small town and a very smaller parish where you're not getting ballistics back that quick. It can take a month, two months, six months, a year for those to come back. That's why you get a lot of continuations a lot of times on cases like this. Good for Trey that the grand jury early in this process said that they're not going to bring charges for a first-time offender with a felony use of a uh, misuse of a firearm. Personally, I believe that that's going to get reduced to probably a misdemeanor, if not both charges. Maybe he gets popped with something, some community service, and I think he's going to be fine. The biggest thing was getting that off of. The sec- or the, 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 the second uh, attempted second-degree murder off of him. Secondly, I told you this, and I and this is something that I promise you, as someone who spent more than a decade in this field, not just and just to say it bluntly, guys, when you have seven people saying, or you have seven people with the same testimony or the same witnesses saying the same things, one of two things is true. Number one, they all fabricating it, and if the story is the exact same then they're all uh, uh, testifying to something that probably did not happen. But number two, let me tell you what cops normally do. All right? Cops, when they get witnesses, normally in a parish like that, normally round everybody up, get them to fill out a statement, a statement form, write it down, collect them, and then use that as evidence. Let me re-say what I just said. You can be arrested off of people writing down on a piece of paper what they saw and there not be any evidence to your eye to seven eyewitnesses. So with that being said, in a, a, at night, at dark, with a not very well lit apartment building, did you really think that you could be able to approve beyond a shadow of a doubt that all seven people saw the same thing? You're full of shit. So... I am glad that this happened for Trey. Everything else, quite honestly, to me, guys, I, I think everything else is going to get reduced. If if they're coming this early with a grand jury, 
and and throwing out the second degree attempted murder, I I, I got to be real with you, man. I think he's in the clear. Uh, like I, I really do. Innocence until proven guilty. Look, man, I am pro Second Amendment. As far as I'm going to get with that, but you got to be careful of being around with people in situations when firearms are there. Even though I have multiple ones in this at my house, okay, it it comes to a place where you got to know your situations. And look, young people are going to make dumb decisions. I'm not saying that he did it. He's pled his innocence from the beginning. But when seven people say the same thing, man, I got to be honest, I call bullshit. Now, you're going to hear that there, you know, maybe the DA had a um, a connection to this case, probably should have recused himself, but it is what it is. Bottom line, man, is you got to be careful with who you surround yourself with. I'm not saying anybody is guilty. I'm not saying anybody is innocent. But when it comes to the the the, the eyes of the law, I think at worst, I, I really do. I would be I would be shocked if Trey Holly got found guilty of felony misuse of a firearm. Legitimately shocked. Like if if that did happen. We need we seriously need answers. I I I I cannot see that. But for a first time offender, absolutely not. Now, if he was a repeat offender, you know, been in and out in and out of the system, which he is not, I'd been like, all right, whatever. But guys, I'm telling you, this thing gonna be thrown out quicker than them than them rip draws that you got, and your wife starts doing your laundry. She's gonna throw them draws out quicker than you probably will. And all you men know that y'all got draws that got holes in them. Um, I, I'm glad that things are moving in the right direction. When it comes to on the field, guys, it's just my personal opinion, and you can disagree. We can fight back and forth with it. I think you need another back. I, I still believe that you need for depth purposes. Uh, I think that there's going to be guys hitting the portal um, more defensively. OK, that that there's an abundance of people there and I think you're going to be able to take one. Now, you're five over three or four over the scholarship limit. So, you know, four is going to have to go. I wouldn't be surprised if six and seven did. Six or seven would be real with you. Um, but that's I, I would take a running back. And if the running back never plays, great. If he does play, great. It is what it is. But I think you need another one. To for just, you need you know who you perfectly need. You need Noah Kane. <laughs> you need Noah Kane just in case, because guys, how many times does Noah Kane have to? Well, shit. I mean, you know, Caleb Jackson. I mean, kind of you know, Logan Diggs limping off the field again. I mean, okay, well, here comes Noah Gain getting some reps. Florida game. I mean, he called a touchdown pass. Shit, Noah Cain two years ago had 10-plus touchdown passes. Or, or, or Didn't he have 10 uh, rushing touchdowns? So, uh, again, it's just, you know, it's where I'm at. That's where I think we need to stick with it. And, and look, it is it is what it is. Okay. Um, Trey must – have Boosie's attorney. I think he's got a good um I think he's got a good attorney. No, I was not a paralegal. Um to Todd. More on the opposite side of being an attorney. Uh, not the police, not like when the police for, you know. Um we'll talk about that one day. This is not the place. Um bottom line is I I just cannot see that it, it being there. Now if it does then Trey's got some enemies and they're trying to make, you know, trying to make an example out of him. But I, I don't know how good, if it's just how good his attorneys are, or if it's just the case was bullshit from the beginning. Like, let me tell you something. When you got a sheriff up there talking about, he's got ballistics. What the fuck? I mean, I, 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 I am as, 
astounded by some of the people that get elected to be a sheriff when they don't have the like any background in it. It it honestly amazes like in law, like it honestly amazes, or even just being a police. It honestly amazes me. Like sure, Christian Bell, you got ballistics that that fast. You cut brick out of a wall and went to your secret underground billion dollar lab. And you're able to get ballistics? No, you didn't. No, you did not. Now, maybe he misspoke, right? Like, maybe that's a, a, a misspeak, and maybe like I did earlier, and that's completely plausible. But when you don't retract something like that, boys, that that it's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. Who, Mike Smalls? Who, Mike Smalls? Who, Mike Smalls? I don't know who Mike Smalls is. Anthony B. Saints has asked Blake, what is your thoughts about PJ Woodland? I'm here and he's turning heads. Yeah, we I think we put that up on um uh, we have a um uh, what do, guys, what do y'all call those things? Shorts on YouTube. I, I mean, I think he's turned some heads a little. I, I just don't I, I don't know if hmm. I'm going to refrain from making a statement until I see him again tomorrow in a full practice. How about that? What do you think about that? There's some things I need to see tomorrow, and things got to pick. Things need to pick up tomorrow. Things need to pick up tomorrow. Uh, his attorney, Mike Small, Small, is outstanding. One of the top defense attorneys in the country. How about that? Here's my question. Who I'm assuming that fee is not small. I wonder who's paying it. Peggy says, why does Jay allow Milam to first pitch swing and not bunt when it's on the coach? I have no idea. Peggy, we talked about that earlier. I have no idea. Um... To answer that question more thoroughly, I just I don't have an answer that that will uh, that will be thorough. Jordan says, "Do you see Ricky Collins um, had some throws yesterday?" I did, I did, and there is a uh, battle there for the second team QB. May the mess band win. I still think that Sloan would go to Swan. Right now, um, I still think that battle is going to go into fall. I don't think they're going to make a determination on who the second string guy is, unless the spring game's really bad. But even then, I don't think it. You know, I don't think that that's going to happen. I mean, I do think that there's a reason that you brought him in. I do think that they're battling, and that Ricky is not going to um, go down without a, you know, without fighting and swinging. And I'll give Ricky this. You know, Ricky's always working out with the guys uh, after practice. I, I will say this. Nuss is not. Nuss is not. Guys, I talk to those a lot of those players. And, uh, you know, like they're, you know, they send whatever. But, you know, after practice or a day that they're not practicing, a lot of the offensive guys are, on the, are, are in the indoor facility working and, and practicing. And Ricky Collins is the one throwing them the football. It ain't nobody else. Garrett ain't there. AJ Swan ain't there. Hurley's not there. Hell, Hurley probably can't even find, you know, poor Hurley. He's so young. By the way, I think he spends it just as – probably he probably the second best guy that can actually spend it on this team. Hurley ain't as bad as people get, are saying either. That whole shit about Colin Hurley was is, is bad, that's bullshit. That kid can throw it. Now, can he can he play in the SEC? I think is a question because um, he's seventeen. I mean, he just turned seventeen. I think it's so unfair. I mean, he is a project, and mainly a project because of his age. There's a no, there is no way unless all chaos broke out that Colin Hurley sees a field next year at all. Maybe they get him in for a snap or two when you're blowing somebody's cheeks out. Pause. But maybe. But other than that, that kid ain't going to no damn game. Ain't no way. None. 
None. Uh, Chris says, can we get Pat uh, Jenkins from Tulane? Is he in the – I don't think he's in the – I mean, technically he's not in the portal yet. And he would be a grad transfer, would he not? Um, Can we? I hope. Better go pay for him. TJ says, what's the get deal with C, uh, uh, J.K. Johnson and the other Ohio State DB? Um, all right, so Jair Brown, I think Jair has looked very serviceable at the uh, nickel. Let's see how he looks tomorrow. I think that they've put in some blitzes for him that he's done good in. Um, let's see how he looks tomorrow. I'll tell you more tomorrow. I mean, he hasn't looked bad. Uh, they haven't really gone his general direction, if we're being honest, that I have seen had gone in his general direction. As far as J.K., I, I mean, he, he he's not out there, and he's sitting on the sidelines not doing nothing, which that only means one thing to me. He's not injured enough to not be out there, but he's injured enough not to be getting reps. That's what it says to me. Speaking of blowing cheeks out, says Fred, my wife just said no, so there's that. <laughs> he said he was going to go try to get him some poontang. Uh, he did not, unfortunate. All right, we'll see you all tomorrow, man. Y'all have a good one. Peace.